Welcome to my review of the Cosview MV200UM USB microscope. The review sample was provided by Salig.com and it sells for just under $60. Let's start with a quick tour. You turn the microscope on with this dial over here, and the dial also controls the LED lighting. You adjust the focus and magnification with this dial, and you can also take a picture with this button on the side. And I'm going to show you some pictures in just a minute. Now, most of the time, you'll want to have the microscope held right up against what you're looking at. This gives you the choice of 50x or 200x magnification with a default spacer, or 80x and 150x with the other spacer. But if you want any other magnification factor and need to move the microscope away, you might run into the problem of shaky hands. Caffeine's not helping me here. For these situations, you can also get the extra microscope stand. A word of warning though, the suction cup on the stand will only work on extremely smooth surfaces. On my scratched up electronics bench it didn't work at all. I will say this though, even if the suction cup doesn't work, it's still better than holding things with your hand because it's easier to hold down the stand's base than it is to hold a microscope in midair. Alright, let's look at some pictures. The software and drivers installed just fine on 64-bit Windows 7. I was very impressed with how sharp the images are. The automatic color and white balance functions seem to work just fine. I also found that you only need a little bit of LED lighting to get a good image. There's some noise, but it doesn't limit the detail captured at all. The product has a really good low light sensor. And there's a little blurring towards the edge of the images, but it's not a big deal. Now, all these images are taken at 50x. That's a 1206 capacitor on the left and an 0402 capacitor next to it. They look huge, and this is all you would ever need for electronics work. But, if you want, take a look at the 0402 capacitor at 200x. It takes up half the screen, and right next to it is a strand of hair. Here's an 0603 resistor. You can actually see the depth of the paint. And here are a couple of shots of gold wire bonding on an RGB LED. The warping is because of the LED's lens, not the microscope. And of course, you can use the microscope for other stuff too. Here's a piece of fabric at 50 and 200x. Here are the tips of my tweezers and some other metal surfaces too. Here's a $20 bill and here's a close-up of a leaf. So basically it's a surprisingly good microscope for 60 bucks. But it's not perfect and here are my criticisms. After you click the capture button it often takes a couple of seconds before the image gets saved. That's because the software is trying to wait for a non-blurry moment, but sometimes it just takes too long. Also, there's no way to change the default directory where the files are saved. They end up in My Documents. The software has an important feature that lets you measure things by drawing circles and polygons around objects. It works well, but first you have to manually read off the scale and type it in. It would have been nice if it could internally get a reading of the scale setting. When capturing images, you get the choice of 1280 by 960 resolution or 1600 by 1200 resolution, and you should know that the higher resolution setting doesn't mean that more detail is getting captured. What happens is that 1600 by 1200 captures a wider area, and 1280 by 960 is a cropped image. By capturing the smaller area, you get faster frame rates for the microscope. In most situations, I would actually recommend sticking with the lower resolution because you get a strong jello effect at 1600 by 1200. Another issue is that when I maximize the screen, the aspect ratio doesn't get preserved because my laptop has a widescreen ratio. Finally, let's talk about the video capture function. At 1600 by 1200, you can get 5 frames per second, which is really choppy. At 1280 by 960, you can get 15 frames per second, which is still choppy, but usable. At 640 x 480, it's supposed to be able to do 30 frames per second, but I was only able to get 22. There's also a time-lapse photography mode, but in general, video does not seem to be a strength for this microscope. Now, despite all of that, I still think it's a good product, because the bottom line is, it has amazing magnification and it takes very sharp, detailed pictures. And that's what I care about the most, and it does it at a low cost. Now, does your average hobbyist at home need one? Probably not if you're still working with breadboards. But if your eyesight's not so good, or you aren't so sure of your surface mount abilities, you might find this to be a useful inspection tool. Universities could use it to look at semiconductors and MEMS dyes. It would also be useful for metallurgists, biologists, dermatologists, and other kinds of ists. 
and of course it would be great for anybody doing manufacturing and quality assurance. Alright, that's the end of the review. Thanks for watching.